What's good, my booskies? I'm Cotton Kitty, and you're in Cotton Kitty's Corner, where we're just gonna sit back and vibe and just connect for a moment. So, take a deep breath, forget your worries for a moment, and let's just chill for a second. Allow this mental relief. Thank you for tuning into my podcast. I appreciate your kinetic energy. I got some good vibes ahead, so stick around and let's create a soul soothing atmosphere together. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back to my little small part of the internet. So today we're going to be talking about life lessons. Today is Teachable Thursday, so we're going to dive into those little small parts of ourselves that kind of steers our whole entire life. One of the things that I like to talk about with my nieces, my nephews, the following generation. I like to talk to them about civil duties, their civil duties, their responsibility to society and their duties to civilization. So the first lesson that I like to speak to them about when it comes to their duty towards their fellow man towards society, putting back into society what they're taking out, is personal accountability. Now you may ask, Cotton, personal accountability? How is that a duty to civilization? How is that my civic duty? Well, I'll explain. Just bear with me for a moment. So if you Google personal accountability, you'll come up with management consultant Todd Herman, his own personal definition. He defined personal accountability as being willing to answer for the outcomes resulting from your choices, behaviors, and actions. When you're personally accountable, You take ownership of situations that you're involved in. Now, how magical is that? Just a certain small act of ownership over your own behaviors, over your own actions, over your own choices. That is a civil duty to one another when we hold ourselves accountable. That is our civil duty to one another. You may have run into individuals who blame the entire world for their lives or the state that their lives are in. Those individuals may say, it's because of so-and-so is why I don't have that promotion. Or it was because of my upbringing, why I can't be more than I am today. You may also find individuals that say, oh, I didn't take that opportunity or I didn't take that job because so-and-so did, said, or what have you. Those individuals are not taking personal accountability for their own actions. Now, I'm a firm believer that although in order to move throughout your career, in order to move up in life, I am a firm believer that it does take assistance and help. Nobody paves the way on their own. There's always someone out there willing to help and open a door. But you have those out there who uses that same idea but flip it on their head. So they may have an opportunity for a new job. And maybe they didn't show up for the interview or they didn't show up for the first day. Or maybe they just didn't 
do well on the job at all and ended up terminated. And these individuals will probably say, oh, I never did make it to the interview because my mom didn't give me money for the bus to get there. Or my boyfriend didn't give me an Uber for the ride to get there. Or my girlfriend didn't iron my clothes or whatever may cause a hindrance. I do apologize about the gender stereotype. It's just something that's come into my head right off the top. But those type of persons are banking their success, their life, their path and journey on the action of someone else. They're not taking personal accountability for what happened. Now, if you are set up, same example, if you're set up for a new job, maybe someone put in a good word for you, or maybe you know the owner and got an in, or another worker and got an in, and they spoke you up and created an opportunity for you. Or made it easier for you to step into one. But your excuse for not doing so is because mm, someone else didn't hold up their end of the bargain. Well, personal accountability will tell us, well, it is your own fault for not having a secure plan, for not having a backup plan. Personal accountability would be that little inkling, that little voice in the back of your head that says, I know that my mom is supposed to give me money to go to my interview to get to my first day. But that little voice is saying, maybe I should think of a backup plan just in case life happens because that's what we do know that life will happen right we know that things come up we know that emergencies happen it's hard to plan for an emergency that's why it's an emergency and the average American is not financially equipped to handle a big financial emergency So that little small voice in the back of our head that says, maybe I should have a plan B or a plan C. That's personal accountability. And if you don't have that voice in the back of your head, maybe it's time to start thinking about it. One of the things that I used to tell a very, very close individual, I used to say, never account for money that you don't have yourself. Never account for it. Don't spend it. Don't bank on it. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Only count the money that you physically, physically have. This individual was confused as to why they consistently ended up in a very particular situation. Um, This situation always came down to being ready to purchase something big, whether it was an apartment, furniture, vehicles. Um, They would be in the process of doing these things. They would be making plans to get these things done all the while banking on someone else to come through. I often advised this individual to only count the finances that they have currently in their hand or their bank account or wherever you keep your money. Because when you account for something that you don't have, The fallout can never be in your control. So, for instance, if you are purchasing new furniture, 
you are purchasing new furniture and you go to the furniture store and you fill out all of the financing information and your credit has been ran you have now you have hard inquiries on your credit you're set up to buy you sign the paperwork you probably didn't notice that there is a fee for processing so whether you are responsible and you go through or you say maybe this isn't the right move and you need to opt out well now you have other things to worry about such as those hidden fees those processing fees because you didn't read um you also now are accountable for those fees if the person that you're banking on does not follow through They may have had an emergency. They may have overshot their generosity. Whatever the case may be, you no longer have access to the fund that you were banking on to make this transaction happen. You no longer have the means that you were counting on to satisfy this. Now, this individual... They couldn't understand for the life of them why they couldn't get ahead, why these things were happening to them. And their head, they are always let down. And their head, they were always set up to be excited or for a new purchase or set up to be excited over another promise just to be let down. And that became their narrative, that became their story, that became the very essence of who they were. They were set up to fail. Everyone was against them. No one would follow through for them. No one would come through for them. And that idea is just setting the precedence in their head that someone had to do these things. But you all know that no one owes you anything. And if anyone was to do anything for you, it's at the kindness of their hearts and it's a blessing. This conversation took place two years ago. This individual is still having problems with the same situation simply because they refuse to accept accountability for their own actions. And they refuse to understand that success and failures start and begin with you, the individual themselves. No one's responsible for that. I really just want to encourage you all to have that sense of self where You only entrust your journey, your future, your well-being to yourself. Entrust it to yourself. Trust that you will be the one to ensure that you have what it is that you need to get to where you want to go. That personal accountability, if not taken seriously can have you wondering, why can't I get ahead? Why do these things never work out for me? How come I try to depend on people and they never come through? These people can depend on me, but I can never depend on them. It'll have you a little bit more bitter than what you need to be if you refuse to take that accountability for yourself. If you want something and you want to go after it and you want to obtain something, put that future in your own hand. Don't try to obtain these things and put these things in someone else's hand. It very rarely works. Now, this is not to say that no one will be there to help you. 
that's not this message. And if you did get that message, I encourage you to rewind this podcast back to the beginning and listen to what we said personal accountability is. When you don't take that personal accountability, you entrust someone else with your goals, your future, it can be a breeding ground for anger, resentment, frustration, stress, bitterness. And those are some of the things that help aid illness along, that helps with cancer and high blood pressure and chronic migraines and chronic pain. That's not what we want. That's not what we want. Because when I say I want to start a podcast, when I say I want to start a podcast and I want to write a book, I want to be an influencer and be present on social media. The people around me may not understand what that may look like or what it may take to get those things done. And that's okay because it's not their dream. It's not their goal. It's mine. So when I'm doing my scheduling for the quarter or when I'm setting those small personal goals like making sure I get an appropriate mic Making sure I understand how to use the softwares to edit my videos and edit my podcast. When I figure out how to upload it to this site and share our SS codes over here, I have to entrust myself with that information. Even as a small business owner, I know that I'll have to dish out work to do. And in this avenue of being a business owner and having my own podcast and my own persona, that's being a business owner. And I may have to entrust things to other people. This is different. Even though I entrust someone to give me a little bit more insight until ASMR, I know that ultimately it is my responsibility to get this information. It is my responsibility to have that know-how, to understand how to go from point A to point B. Regardless of outsourcing that job task is ultimately my responsibility. So if the individual I task this to does not perform accordingly or they drop the ball or decide, I don't want to do this anymore, guess what I have to fall back on? Me. I have me to fall back on. I have the fact that I know what needs to be done. I know what questions need to be asked. I know these things, so when I have to step up to the plate, when it's my turn to bet, I won't miss. It won't be a strike. And that's personal accountability. Even though it was outsourced, even though I had assistance and help, I have a wonderful team and I really do appreciate my team. Even though I do have these things, it is ultimately my dream. It is ultimately my goal to get this done. And when it needs to get done, I'm the one that has to do it. And I'm okay with that because I'm working hard for my goals. I'm working hard for my dreams. And it's my choice. To see it to fruition, just like it's my choice to drop the ball with it. I will have to take personal accountability, whether I'm successful with it or whether I am not. And that's because my success and my failures begin 
it ends with me. It's a good rule of thumb to be serious about your journey. Be serious about your goals and what you're trying to achieve and the things that you're trying to get done. Because if you are serious, one, nothing can stand in your way. Two, you won't give yourself an excuse. I will not give myself the excuse to fail. I won't do it. Now, if it doesn't work out, that's a totally different thing because good business and good management is knowing when to stop, is knowing when to switch gears, is knowing when to vacate a sinking ship. And that's just part of good business. That's just part of good management. And that does not necessarily equate to failure. If you've ever taken a business class, you know that failure can be the refusal to let go. That can be accounted as failure. So we definitely don't want to go down that road. But we do want to make sure that whatever goals that we have, whatever future that we're setting ourselves up for, whatever journey that we are on, we just want to make sure that we are giving ourselves the best chance. We want to make sure that we are putting our futures in our own hand and that we're not allowing someone else to dictate our path. When you take control of your own life and you have your life in your hands and you trust yourself because what we had that courage to look at ourselves honestly. We had that courage to accept ourselves for who we are. And we had the open mind to say, hmm, maybe this will work for us. Maybe this doesn't work for us, so we need to change it. But whatever the case may be, you want to be in control of that. You don't want to leave your goals and ambition to someone else. If I am going out for something, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure I can obtain those things. And I do know at a certain point, you just got to take it out of your own hand and leave it up to the fates. And I understand that. I accept that. I know this about the world. I know that you can't control everything. But I'm okay with that whole process of leaving the rest to fate because I know, I know that I've done everything that I could. I know that I put my best self out there and gave it my best effort and I put my all into what it was that I was doing. And if it was meant for me, I get it. And if it's not, then maybe next time around. You know, sometimes that is the way the world works. That's the way the cookie crumbles at times. We just have to accept that some things just won't be. But that's only after we've known that we've done everything that we could to make sure that those things can be. So to bank on someone else in order to achieve your goal is setting yourself up for failure. And we want to set ourselves up for success as much as possible. That's why we're here. That's why we're talking and that's why we're vibing and we're grooving because we want to give ourselves the best shot at success. We want to give ourselves the best shot at being who we are, the best of who we are. And then when you get those little side comments and you get those little side digs because You left your fate to your own hands. And those who don't understand how to do that, 
they won't appreciate the hard work that it takes to put your life in your own hands. They may say snide comments on the side. They may say that you move different and that you act different. But that's just indication that it works because that's the goal, to be better than I was yesterday. And in order to be better, I have to change. And in order to change, that just means I can't look the same as I did yesterday. So when they do tell you these things because they don't understand what it takes to take your life back, they don't understand the courage and the tenacity that it takes to have some personal accountability, you just look at them and you say, You can have it too. The only thing you have to do is take yourself seriously and have some personal accountability in place for yourself. That personal accountability is going to make sure that you cross your T's, dot your I's, read the fine print, Have multiple ways of getting the same job done just in case your first plan don't work out. It's okay to have a plan B and a plan C. And I know that um, it may feel a little weird or it may even feel like a betrayal to take your life back into your own hands, but I assure you that it's not. I think that's pretty much the basics. You have to put in the work. But until you take that personal accountability, until you put that work in, you're not putting in the work. It's okay to have those multiple ways of getting things done. Because as we know, life is life. Things happen. Plans don't go accordingly. And we all know that plans can fail. But we also know when you fail, to plan. You're just planning to fail. And we don't want that. We don't want that now, do we? We want to be successful. We want to set ourselves up for success. I believe you can be successful. I know you can be successful. Let me tell you how I know you can be successful. It's because you're looking for that centeredness. You're looking for that calmness, that oneness, that omness, so that you can be better than you were yesterday. So I know, I know for a fact that you have what it takes to be successful. Because to be honest with you, when you're searching for it, when you base your life around it, when you seek it out, It's inevitable. It's inevitable that you get it. And I know that you're going to get it. I have nothing but faith in you. So whatever your journey is, whatever your goals are, whatever your future holds that you set for yourself, I know that you have it within you to have the courage to look at yourself I know you have the courage to be able to see you for who you are and to adjust accordingly. I believe in you. How about we close out with saying some good things about ourselves? Just repeat after me. I am amazing. I am productive. I am worthy. Good job. So that's all the time we have here in Cotton Kitty's Corner. I hope you enjoyed the vibe and setting the atmosphere with me. I hope you're leaving here a little bit better than how you came. I really do hope you enjoy spending the last half an hour with me because I definitely enjoy spending my last half an hour with you. So until next time, my booskies, stay lovely, stay humble, and definitely, definitely collect that vibe.